What's up guys, Justin here with TheRenderingEssentials.com. So one of the things about SketchUp is it doesn't really handle super heavy polygon items like trees and plants um, very easily. Well in today's video we're going to talk about a workflow you can use in order to keep your low poly plants in SketchUp and then replace them with higher polygon plants inside Twinmotion. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So if you stick around until the end I'll also show you a way to use this method to quickly place light fixtures inside of Twinmotion. But you can see how this is a model I've downloaded from the 3D warehouse. It's called Urban Scene 192 by Flashy G. So you can download this and follow along. And one thing that I like about it is it's got all these trees in here and they're all named the same thing. They're all copies of a singular component. Right, so if I click on this, these are all tree 2D schematic walnut. And so that's gonna be helpful for me when I take this over into Twin Motion. And so the first thing we wanna do is we wanna take this into Twin Motion right now. And they've changed the direct link to the Datasmith plugin. And so what that means is that means that first we need to jump into Twin Motion and we need to create a Datasmith direct link. So I'm gonna click the plus button right here. Um, notice how my SketchUp file that's open already shows up under direct link right here. And what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that we've selected the option to keep hierarchy. That's gonna be really important because that is going to keep the organization that we have over here on the right hand side. So we're gonna need that so that we can find these individual trees. And then we're gonna click on the button for import. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna link our scene to SketchUp and it's going to import that file into Twinmotion. So you can see how now this whole building has been imported into Twin Motion, And so we'll fly over to the front of our building right here. And so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take my ground plane and I'm gonna move it down just a bit so that I can see everything in my scene, right? So now we've got this all here ready to go. And so what we wanna do is we wanna take these trees and we wanna replace them, right? So these trees are currently in here as a 2D model, which isn't necessarily what we want. You can see how if I look at the backside of them, you can't even see them inside of my scene. And so an easy way to change this is to basically go into our search right here and type in the name of the tree. So in this case, we wanna find tree 2D schematic walnut right? So we want to find all of those trees. And what we want to do is we want to replace them with trees inside of Twin Motion. So I'm going to go down to the bottom of the page and I'm going to do a shift click to select them all. I'm going to right click. Well, notice how there's an option here to replace object. And so when I click on the option for replace object, what it's going to do is it's going to pop up a little box down here where I can, where I can actually drag in the object that I want to place. And so one thing that's really important though, is you need to make sure when we go back into SketchUp, we need to make sure that our model axes are at the base of our tree. What this is gonna do is it's gonna replace our objects based on those model axes, right? So wherever those model axes is, that's where it's gonna place the new trees. In this case, this was set up correctly, so we're good to go. And so what I wanna do is I just wanna replace them with one of these trees. In this case, maybe I'll go with this uh, ginkgo tree right here. So I'm just gonna take it, I'm gonna drag it, right here. Notice how it says drop here. Well then, all we have to do is click on the option for start replacement. And so what this is gonna do is this is gonna go through and it's gonna replace all of these trees with this tree right here. So it's gonna replace your flat 2D trees with this 3D tree from our library. And this may take a little while, especially if you're replacing like 400 trees like we are right here. So we're gonna wait for a little bit and then we're gonna come back and take a look at our result. All right, so now, you can see that what this did is this replaced all of those trees with this tree right here. So now if I was to close this out and look at this, you can see how all of these, these have all been replaced with the ginkgo tree right here. And so you can see how it was really easy to bring in all of these different trees in here like this. But one thing you might consider is inside of SketchUp, you might consider adding a little bit of random rotation using like a random rotation and scale um, extension or something like that. So that these are all kind of facing different directions. I'm actually not sure how that works with the 2D face me components. Like I don't know if you can adjust the axes so that these have a little bit more randomization. But one thing I did wanna talk about is let's say that you wanna do the same thing for some lights on the bottom of our building, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a light and it's gonna have three components in it or three groups in it. And then the light itself is going to be a component. So I'm gonna take all of this and I'm gonna make it a component and we're gonna call it light. And then 
what I want to do is notice how this is made up of a cylinder here, a cylinder here, and then it's also made up of a cylinder here. Well, what I want to do is I want to first double click and then it has a circle right here. Well, the circle, and I'm going to rename this um, light location, the circle is something we can replace with like a spotlight, right? But the first thing we need to do if we're going to do this is we need to take the circle, click inside of it, and we need to make sure that the axis is centered on our circle and facing outward, right? We want the blue to be facing outward. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a line from the center here to the center here, and then I'll continue it this way. That's going to give me a guideline that I can use in order to set my axes up. So for example, I can take this and align it along the circle, but then I want to make sure that my blue axis is along this circle right here. And I'm holding the Alt key, um, or I tap the Alt key so that this will place the blue axis along this line. And I can go ahead and erase out the guidelines that I created. But now what I have is I have a light fixture right here that's made up of two cylinders and a light location. Well, if I take that light location, and I'm going to go ahead and make a couple copies of this. All right, so now I've got these little light fixtures in here. And I'm going to click on the button to synchronize this so that it resends it over to Twin Motion. Well, now I can go over to Twin Motion. Notice how these are all going to show up in here. Well, within those, I can go find all of the objects labeled light location. I can right click and I can do a replace object. And in this case, what I want to do is I want to bring in a light. So maybe something like this one right here. So I'm just going to drop this in and click on the option for start replacement. And we'll go ahead and rotate those 180 degrees like this. But now if I was to toggle my daytime, like this, you can see how I was easily able to bring in those light fixtures and add them to my scene. And so from here, you can adjust the attenuation of the objects to see how far they're going to go. You can adjust if they set shadows, you can adjust their intensity, you can adjust all of those different things using the sliders down here just by selecting them all. But this is a really fast way to add light fixtures to your renderings in Twin Motion as well. All right, so leave a comment below. Let me know if you have any questions. I'll link to some other Twin Motion tutorials on this page. I'm looking forward to doing some more Twin Motion tutorials later this year. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.